today uh, primarily we have to talk about uh, the defects uh, or discontinuities which are commonly uh, found in the arc y joints okay so uh, uh, these discontinuities need to be minimized and need to be reduced or eliminated so that uh, uh, the performance of the joint can be uh, maximized. Uh, so, what are the uh, main factors which usually lead to the development of the weld discontinuities? And uh, thereafter, uh, the specific causes related to uh, the weld discontinuities and what can be done. If you understand the causes, probably we can easily. Uh, take the remedial action and uh, the primary reason behind uh, controlling these weld discontinuities is uh, that they adversely affect the service performance in terms of the load carrying capacity in terms of the premature failure of the joints during the service. So it is important that this, these discontinuities are uh, minimized or these are eliminated. Okay, so uh, you can say the weld discontinuities uh, there is a little difference in weld discontinuities and weld defects uh, say uh, whenever uh, there is an imperfection in a weld joint uh, which is still is acceptable you see there is no nothing is perfect there are always some kind of the imperfections but still things may work so if that is the case we call it as a discontinuity but when the discontinuity becomes so large that the performance of the joint is very badly uh, adversely affected and it is no, no longer able to uh, survive means the joint is no longer able to survive then uh, we'll say that as a defect so a well joint may have uh, the number of the discontinuities but all may not be leading to the rejection of joint say this is the well joint okay so it is fine that if you have few inclusions and the pores of very small size like say 5 micrometer inclusion or 5 micrometer porosity or 5 uh, 50 micrometer crack so these may be these may not be that harmful to degrade the performance so if there are uh, the discontinuities which are extremely fine not adversely affecting the performance significantly then we'll say that these are acceptable okay and when these become significantly large say 5 mm or 10 mm crack then obviously the joint uh, has to be rejected because it will not perform during the service uh, and uh, its mechanical load carrying capacity and uh, the service performance will be badly um, adversely affected because it is extremely difficult a weld it is extremely difficult to develop a weld joint which is really free from all types of the discontinuities these will always be there in one or other form so complete elimination is really very difficult and which may not be economical as well okay so what we can do we have to see that we have to live with these discontinuities so reduce so optimize the welding related things such that uh, these are uh, acceptable these are within the acceptable limits okay so so they uh, so you need to um, you you need to control your process in such a way that these discontinuities do not go beyond the acceptable limits that is why you will always find some kind of the acceptance criteria in terms of the uh, criteria with regard to the weld joints like what you will accept even if there are discontinuities 
what size can be accepted depending upon the like say section thickness like say a weld joint in a thickness of say 50 mm weld uh, plate thickness is say 50 mm it's possible that you may not bother of 1 mm 2 mm crack size because this will be non propagating type it may not harm the joint in any way so it depends on the multiple factors Mm, uh, or acceptance criteria actually depends on the multiple factors okay so the uh, idea here is to talk about the builders continuities to understand what are the various types of the discontinuities which are formed and how these can be minimized okay so to un to understand the methodologies for minimization it is important to understand the causes of those discontinuities and defects okay so the main factors that lead to the development of the discontinuities these include the the typical weld thermal cycle which is being imposed say this is the weld joint being developed so the zones next to the fusion boundary or even the fusion boundary these will be experiencing say if i write one two three locations in the welding and try to check that variation in temperature as a function of time then what you will notice at point one the temperature is going like this and then coming out slowly at point two temperature is going fast and then coming out at a faster rate at point 3 it is going extremely high rate and then coming at a very fast rate like this so it, it is taking lesser time to reach the higher temperature peak temperature is high heating rate is high cooling rate is high so all three like heating rate cooling rate and the peak temperature all these are high as we approach towards the fusion boundary so if this well thermal cycle related with the welding is unfavorable then we will see that there are number of discontinuities then the heat which is being delivered during the welding say whether it is gas welding or arc welding if the amount of heat being supplied is not optimum either the net heat input say in arc welding is being given through v i divided by s if this is too high then also we have problem or if it is too low then also we come across multiple problems you will see that during the welding if we don't clean the plates properly before joining so the cleaning means there may be rust there may be paint there may be oil on the surface of the plates to be joined and in presence of these impurities if the welding is performed it will have number of discontinuities and defects okay so the cleanliness is extremely important cleanliness of the plates or the base metal that is extremely important there are uh, say there are number of uh, the metallurgical changes take place due to the heating and cooling so we can say number uh, the metallurgy of the metals is affected and many times this change in metallurgy of the metal due to the rapid heating and cooling in the weld joint as well as in the heat affected zone this leads to the development of the discontinuities and the defects so these are some of the common factors uh, which contribute towards the development of defects and discontinuities the most common uh, the weld discontinuities or defects include like say porosity okay then there are inclusions then incomplete penetration incomplete penetration and incomplete fusion as well okay incomplete fusion or incomplete penetration these are the two different types of the defects but incomplete word is common in both the cases then weld uh, weld bead profile the weld profile is is really bad as the surface is too rough or there are number of possibilities 
or the, there are cracks in the weld which is being made or the surface of the base metal is getting damaged so surface damage maybe uh, you are having lot of spatters or cavities or hard zones are being formed so uh, then there is a residual stress and the distortion so residual stress development these are some of the undesirable things uh, which may develop in a weld joint and once these develop if these are large whenever these are there these will be deteriorating the performance but still in presence of these the performance may be acceptable if these discontinuities are fine but if these discontinuities and they are large enough to significant uh, they are significantly large enough which may lead to the rejection of the weld itself when the discontinuities become so large that it is leading to the rejection of the weld joint then we call it as a defect okay so it is desired that these are minimized these discontinuities are minimized so we under, let us understand what are the primary causes of these porosity okay uh, of these uh, discontinuities so the first is porosity porosity primarily um, developed in the weld joints due to the two reasons you know due to the difference in solubility of gases in liquid and solid state you know the gases can dissolve more in the say this is a temperature uh, this is the liquid state say okay this is the temperature this is a liquid state so solubility may be here but in the solid state the temperature is low so the solubility is here so for any gas you take oxygen or hydrogen the solubility may be very less in the solid state and it may be very high greater is the difference greater will be the problems because when you melt things get dissolved and when you your solidification takes place so the gases are rejected because of the reduction in solubility and these gases may not get, get enough time to come out of the molten metal and so these may get trapped and leading to the presence of air pockets here and there so the difference in solubility of the gases in liquid and solid state if the moment the gases are being rejected by the molten metal which is solidifying okay these gases should give get enough opportunity to come out of the weld metal if that opportunity doesn't exist then it will be leading to the entrapment of the gases so the cooling rate or the solidification time of the weld metal is the another thing that determines if the porosities will be formed or the gases will get entrapped or not so if your cooling rate is low then solidification time will be more the gases will be able to easy escape escaping will be easy if the solidification time is more and the porosity formation tendency will be minimized okay so where from these are coming there is a possibility that there is a moisture in the base metal moisture in the electrode and that moisture in the effect of the flame in the under the effect of the arc heat is is forming uh, steam and then which is uh, getting decomposed into the oxygen and the hydrogen and these get dissolved this is one thing then there may be impurities in form of hydrocarbons like a grease there is oil there is a paint on the surface so if it is not cleaned properly then these hydrocarbons again decompose and produce the hydrogen carbon monoxide carbon dioxide etc there is also possibility that these gases already in dissolved state in the base metal itself so the metal which is being welded is already having some amount of the hydrogen in it so that hydrogen uh, or uh, oxygen these also contribute to the presence of the porosity in the weld metal so what are the solutions or remedies so to control the pores uh, the most important and workable is like let us clean the the surfaces of the base metal very properly and let's do everything which can help to reduce the cooling rate 
and this is possible either by increasing the heat input so the net heat input is increased by increasing the welding current or the cooling rate can also be reduced by preheating of the plates so say if the plates initially at 24 it will be cooling fast during the welding as compared to the case when it is at 150 degrees centigrade if the base metal is heated to the high temperature cooling rate will get reduced so it, it will give longer solidification time the gas in, uh, porosity entrapment tendency is reduced so this is a simple logic increasing h depth reduces the cooling rate increasing preheat temperature reduces the cooling rate so we always try to use these methods to reduce the cooling rate so that there is enough time for the impurities to come out of the weld metal then there is another common defect is inclusions inclusions is about like oxygen nitrogen or hydrogen present in the atmosphere is reacting with the metal to form their metallic oxides nitrides okay or hydrides if these have the density similar to that of the metal so wherever these are being formed these will remain there these will not be uh, floating over the surface and on after the solidification these will be left in the well metal itself so oxides nitrides etc these will be left in the well metal so what we say uh, there is a one situation where these oxides and nitrides are forming the inclusions another possibility these oxides nitrides are reacting with the flux forming the slag okay but the slag is also getting trapped inside the weld metal so the slag also get trapped or oxide also get trapped so accordingly we have oxide inclusions nitride inclusions or we have slag inclusions in all these cases it is the entrapment of the oxides nitrides or the slag which is taking place okay so what is the best way if the slag is being formed let us remove say you make the weld like this slag will be there on the top surface so let us remove before performing another round of the welding so cleaning of the slag this is one thing and then cleaning uh, see slag is being formed due to what due to the reactions with the oxygen nitrogen and hydrogen let us provide the effective protection to the weld metal from oxygen nitrogen and uh, hydrogen okay and this is possible through the use of very good shielding to the weld metal so provision of providing the good protection to the weld metal will also help in forming the slag forming the oxides and nitrides that in turn will help to reduce the inclusions in the weld joint okay there is another possibility that is also termed as like uh, what we can do if your weld geometry is like this narrow groove then it will take very long time to say if you are making in one go well like this so opportunity to reach these inclusions up to the surface will be limited as compared to the case when it is very wide and open okay so the development of so likewise you have like say j group geometry or u u, uh, u uh, group geometry so those will have the greater tendency for entrapment as compared to those which are uh, which needs the larger amount of the weld metal uh, and uh, the, the space is wide open for floating the impurities and slag, slag up to the uh, surface okay so um, suitable groove design basically choice of the groove geometry uh, also can help to uh, control the inclusion okay uh, the other two things like uh, the lack of fusion or lack of penetration these are the two other kind of the defects both these develop primarily due to the poor or less heat being supplied for the welding purpose whenever it happens whenever the heat input is less means whatever vi combination and speed combination is being used that is not good enough say for welding purpose if you need 2 kilojoule per mm heat and instead of that if you are providing just 1.2 kilojoule then less heat input will cause a lot of problems 
say what is that say this is the the base metal prepared okay and you are applying the arc heat arc heat is limited is not sufficient then what will happen the molten metal coming from the electrode that will simply be placed over the surface and it will cause no, no fusion of the base metal so metal is simply placed over the surface and there is no melting of the base metal itself okay so this is the lack of fusion situation uh, and th there is another possibility when the heat input is less these are and you are having the square group geometry you are applying the heat from the top and melting is taking place just up to a certain depth not through thickness so through thickness is not realized but melting is only up to certain depth so in that case the parent this is the unwelded zone you will always be left with in, in lack of penetration situation you will always have the some unwelded zone section like this say you are applying the heat but here there is no melting so this is the lack of fusion okay or if uh, if you are just placing the metal here like this so sufficient depth is not getting melted so that will be leading to the lack of penetration uh, in one case the penetration is happening but not up to su sufficient depth that is the lack of penetration in this in the first case where lack of fusion means there is no fusion of the base metal at all so this is the case where there is no fusion and this is the case where the fusion is limited or fusion is not sufficient so this is the basic difference in the lack of fusion and lack of penetration and both are the problems due to the problems related with the limited heat input so we need to what we need to do we can reduce the heat input or we can increase the welding current so that heat input uh, can be increased and uh, so the required fusion of the base metal and uh, the required penetration of the base metals can be realized uh, for developing the well joint okay so this is about the lack of fusion and the lack of uh, penetration uh yes if we supply more heat say like this and uh, if uh, the more heat excessive heat say instead of two kilojoule you have supplied four kilojoule then well joint should have been formed like this okay but if you supply too much heat then whole of the area will be melted and this entire the zone will be brought to the molten state and you may have the melt through situation you may not be able to control the well metal itself metal will start flowing in here and there so you see use of the too much of the heat so that is also kind of problem only there is no weld actually in that case the molten metal will start flowing here and there so you don't have any control over the molten metal if the heat input is too high that is the problem common problem with the thin sheet welding say if the sheet thickness is just one mm right so the moment you apply heat little even little heat say 0.5 kilojoule per mm that is good enough so but still if you slow down the speed little bit you may find that through penetration has taken place and the molten metal has started to flow down huh? so because thin sheets are normally welded in the simple this form just apply heat fuse the ends and uh, after the solidification you will get a joint so this is the best situation but if the heat is too much you will see that molten metal melt through has taken place and the molten metal has passed as there as a simply cavity has been created because it is autogenous we don't use the filler okay there is no filler that's just a fusion of the uh, the paint surfaces or the edges of the plate is uh, used for that purpose okay so uh, that's uh, that's the query actually so anyway we'll be going to the uh, next uh, yeah i was talking actually one more additional point related to the lack of penetration uh, say this is one situation in welding of thick plates you are having j group geometry like this right your arc is not uh, you are not uh, electrode is not able to reach up to the root so your arc is not able to reach up to the bottom okay so this is a scene where the group geometry is not proper that is why arc is not able to reach up to the root and that's why some portion is left unmelted unfused okay so choose choice of the suitable group geometry will allow access 
to the electrode up to the root so that the proper fusion is uh, realized okay uh, so this is another situation which can cause the lack of uh, penetration your welding parameters are fine but you are not able to reach up to the root okay so the weld bead geometry or profile of the weld so there are a few common problems which are encountered so, say that you have nicely prepared a v group geometry for the welding purpose okay like this so uh, uh, if your weld being developed is like this you have applied the the welding and due to the poor control over the molten metal deposition right like this so here in this section actually this section is simply say this is the unmelted base metal you, your molten metal has simply placed over the base metal and solidified so this is this is the section where no melting of the base metal just molten metal has been placed over the base metal and solidified so this is you can say as overlap overlap defect and this is the section where there is no molten metal so this you can say as a undercut okay undercut and there there apart from this there can be number of other issues like say uh, the weld bead weld bead is either like this sorry uh, it, it's too peaked like the heat input is less so molten metal is not able to flow the bead is peaked okay or uh, the weld is uh, of this uh, this is the groove geometry so this is under fill the cavity or the groove has not been filled in so in that case the load resisting cross sectional area is just this much no uh, rather it should have been at least this much only so when you have either under filling or very peaked weed both are not helpful okay then there is a situation where in uh, let me see Sorry. so okay related to the, the profiling only the one pro one uh, major issue related to the weld bead profile is the weld bead toe say you have made a weld like this it can be made in number of situations so the one is is this like this or uh, let me correct it again uh, so th this is a very high angle oh sorry <laughs> okay yeah so we want that the the gradient between the base metal and weed is smooth like this okay so there is no localization or stress concentration at this junction between the base and the weld okay this is the base and this is a weld so this section is called weld toe this must be as smooth as possible but what so in this case if it is smooth then the angle which you can call it as a bead angle this should be low maybe it is good if it is less than 15 degree it is good right but what happens if our heat input is not proper or manipulation of the molten metal or welding or arc heat is not proper then what will happen that you may have the weld to like this so having angle of let's say 60 degree 70 degree so the too high base metal is coming then weld is coming like this so this sudden change in cross section is actually harmful because this acts as a, a stress concentration or a stress concentration or a stress razor so here you may have in this section you may have a stress of 200 mpa okay but wherever the stress concentration is taking place at that location you may have 280 or even 300 so it may be even double also so if that is happening then your crack will start at this location so the weld toe if the sudden change in cross section is taking place due to the high bead angle say 70 or 80 degree rather than 10 or 15 degree then it will be causing the stress concentration and it will be acting as a, a source of weakness the fracture will start very easily so 
So uh, whatever the defects I have talked like whether it is uh, undercut like this okay this will also be acting as a stress concentration reducing the load resisting cross sectional area. Uh, there is an overlap like say just metal is deposited in this manner okay so overlap is also not helping in any way just metal is placed the bead is too peaked high, causing the high stress concentration into the high low high bead angle uh, and uh, there is another dimension related to the poor bead profile that the bead is very rough like this so this is the weld bead like this you have developed along the length of the weld so rough bead this is called a, what we call it is a very rough uh, weld bead if very rough weld bead is developed then you see all these uh, valleys present at the surface in form of a rough bead these will be causing like the bead is, uh, rough morphology is like this this is a weld deposited in a plate so this will be causing the stress concentration will be reducing the tensile strength it will be reducing the fatigue strength and all that so it this needs to be smooth and finished and for that you may use machining or so okay just to smoothen the things so that was about uh, what you call mm, weld bead profile okay then coming to the next one is uh, the next major uh, kind of the defect that is encountered is cracker or oh, sorry cracks the major defects and discontinuities encountered in the weld joint is the crack so there are two uh, ways of classifying the, there are different types of the cracks one is based on the location of the crack where it is located so according to that we call it uh, we give the different names to the cracks okay then in which stage the crack is developed when the weld is hot or it has cooled down to the room temperature so hot or cold these are the two ways so based on the location if the cracks are like say longitudinal crack transverse crack toe crack crater crack okay uh, under bead crack so these uh, this classification is based on the location where the crack is located then there is a, a stage so just after the solidification or near the end of the solidification if the crack is being developed in the weld we call it as a solidification or hot crack okay, solidification or hot crack okay this mostly occurs in the weld metal center okay cold crack this occurs under the low temperature or ambient condition low temperature may say minus 20 0 degree centigrade or say room temperature also 24 degree centigrade so when the weld joint has solidified it has cooled down to the room temperature then you will see there are cracks automatically in the weld joint so if that is happening we'll call it as a cold crack okay so let us talk about uh, first uh, classification okay so let me make uh, the well joint right this and this is the okay this is the top view this is the well uh, being made and uh, in the front view if you see it will look like this right this is the well view. so i'll make the different types of say you are here your arc is here this so this is the uh, arc location and this is the, you can say this is where uh, the weld is terminating or it is ending okay so this is the start and this is the end section when the crack is developed in the welding direction like this like this okay so this is the welding direction and this is perpendicular to the welding direction so it is a longitudinal and this is transverse direction all right transverse direction is this and longitudinal will be this one okay uh, now so these are the long when the crack is in line uh, along the direction of welding this is called a longitudinal crack when the crack is perpendicular to the welding direction this is called a transverse crack okay when the crack is located at the end where weld has terminated 
that location will be termed as say this one so if this is this is the yeah this is uh, the this is our this metal and this is where the weld pool is terminating so if the cracks are being developed in this zone this, these are called crater cracks okay uh, then uh, weld toe crack if the crack is at the the tip of the weld bead and uh, the base metal where these are meeting so this is the toe of the weld the crack is developed at the toe this is called a weld toe crack okay and then under bead crack if the crack is developed just below the weld bead in in front view that you can see just below the weld bead if uh, the crack is being developed you call it as an under bead crack ubc so this is uh, based on the location and uh, regarding the other one i have already talked if it is happening uh, just at the end of the solidification and uh, the crack is being developed at the weld center this is uh, so this if the crack is here so this is called a solidification crack or hot crack it, it is actually how i don't use hard crack, hot crack in the mm -hmm. welding we use basically solidification crack and if the weld is being developed uh, the crack is being developed after coming down or cooling down of the weld joint up to the room temperature okay in that case what we say it is a cold crack cold crack may develop in the heat affected zone adjacent to the weld metal or the weld metal itself so these may be cold cracks so what are the causes of these cracks okay it can be hot or it can be cold so uh, you know crack is about the opening okay and openings do not happen automatically you need stresses so presence of the tensile stress is needed tensile stress is needed okay so what happens when you heat and then cool so on cooling the lot of tensile residual stresses develop because of the shrinkage effect so these tensile residual stresses set up all around the weld it can be in the heat affected zone and also in the weld zone when the tensile stresses develop in the weld or in a heat affected zone which has become very hard and brittle whether it is hot or it is cold presence of the tensile residual stresses and in presence of uh, the hard and brittle zone formation leads to the development of these cracks so the presence of the tensile stresses is extremely important for development of these cracks okay so so what the main cause here one is the embrittlement of the weld or the heat affected zone due to the heating and cooling being imposed during the welding and the development of the tensile residual stresses in the weld joint so these are the two main things uh, this embrittlement the causes of these embrittlements may be multiple like uh, the segregation of the low melting point constituents in the weld center say if this is one situation so what what is happening here say this is the weld metal the base metal the weld is developed by the heat so if there are impurities like sulfur phosphorus or lead these low melting point impurities what they lead to when solidification starts from the fusion boundary and it progresses towards the weld center okay like this so impurities of low melting point they get rejected and segregated at the center why because the say steel melts around say 1500 but these impurities are say forming the constituents which can melt and solidify say around 700 or 800 so everything is solidified except these impurities so wherever these are present means these are present at the center in case of uh, uh, the solidification crack or hot cracks so these impurities which are solidifying at very low temperature as compared to the base metal or the remaining weld metal these show cracks these cause cracks 
at high temperature. So at the end of the solidification, we said that see that the weld center has got cracks due to the presence of these impurities. Okay. So this is one thing. Second thing, whenever the some of the metals like steels, iron carbon systems, cast irons, uh, cast irons. So uh, the hardenable steels, hardenable ferrous metals rather, hardenable ferrous metals, when they are subjected to the typical weld thermal cycle of like rapid heating and cooling, it shows a lot of embrittlement means you will notice that the heat affected zone has got hardened the weld also has got hardened so hardening of all these zones is taking place means the hardness has increased toughness has come down very badly elongation has come down very badly so in presence of the tensile residual residual tensile tensile residual stresses these will show cracks okay and these problems are further deteriorated or exaggerated by the presence of hydrogen in the weld or in the heat vector zone so if the hydrogen is present in the weld or in heat vector zone the problem of this cold cracking is further enhanced and you will notice that after the welding the joint has cracked automatically on its own so that is the prob that is the kind of problem we call it as a cold crack okay so the best way to reduce this is like let's do proper cleaning so that all impurities sources of the hydrogen are eliminated let us go for proper baking of the electrodes so that all moisture is driven off and the hydrogen is reduced from the weld metal let us do the preheating of the plate so that the cooling rate is reduced hard uh, embrittlement of the weld and heat vector zone is reduced through the preheating and let us design the weld joint also so that uh, the residual stress development is minimized which is contributing towards the cracking so the cleaning baking of electrode preheating and the redesigning of the weld joint these are some of the measures which we can take in order to reduce the cracking tendency okay cold cracking tendency specifically coming to the surface damage you know, whenever we weld, like say this is R and this is the face. Okay. So you'll always notice that the mortar metal is getting transferred like this in the weld metal, uh, in the weld zone. So some of the molten metal drops will be falling here and there. Okay. So these will be also causing the melting of the base metal and even sometimes hardening of the base metal takes place. So if some kind of the depression or cavities are formed here and there by these spatters, then these spatters will be leading to the hardening, embrittlement as well as formation of the craters or cavities in the base metal here and there. So that will be causing the stress concentration. These will be causing the weakness or increasing the failure tendency. So, spattering is one of the major problem for these kinds of the surface damage. And spattering is what? It is nothing, just a falling of the molten metal here and there during the welding. Okay. Now, coming to the last one, the residual stress development. Residual stress development is, is uh, to be understood. Like say, this is the... The, these are the base metal plate 1 and base metal plate 2, okay, of say same metal. When you are applying heat, so all the things are brought to the molten state and then your uh, solidification is leading to the development of weld. So heat you are applying in a very localized zone, this area. So when it is heated, during the heating phase, uh, there will be expansion of the plates in very central zone. And subsequently, the weld thermal cycle will be coming through the cooling phase. So, this is the cooling phase and this is the heating phase. Okay. This is the heating region or cooling region. And this is the peak temperature. 
so it will be changing as a function of location where we are talking about of which point we are talking about and the belt thermal cycle is different for each zone okay but anyway just for example you can see this so when we are heating temperature is rising expansion is taking place when there is a rise of temperature the yield strength of the metal comes down it becomes soft so expansion is possible but when you start cooling the temperature comes down the yield strength of the metal starts increasing you know that at high temperature metals become weak so when the temperature comes down uh, it becomes stronger so when the moment it starts becoming stronger the shrinkage to the perfect earlier level is not possible and so some amount of the strain is left some amount of the shrinkage which should have taken place could not take place due to this strengthening of metal at low temperature so some strain is left so when this strain is multiplied by modulus of elasticity we get the stress this residual this stress we can call it as a residual stress because it is always there whenever welding is performed so this you cannot eliminate just after the welding but you need the post weld treatments to eliminate one thing so the strain left multiplied by modulus of elasticity will be giving you the stress value okay this stress is there even when there is no external load whenever there is and mostly this stress is tensile in nature in this weld zone and adjacent to that it is compressive but it is tensile trs tensile stresses in the weld zone so let's take a simple example this is the weld zone so a residual stress distribution if you see in the weld zone it will go like this what is this that the residual stresses are tensile tensile residual stresses in the weld zone and just balancing stresses compressive stresses are their residual compressive stresses are there both the sides in the in vicinity of the weld joint so we are more concerned about the tensile ones because whatever hardening embrittlement and cracking is taking place that is because of the tensile stresses so these tensile stresses once develop these reduce the tensile strength of the base of the weld joint as a whole these reduce the fatigue strength of the weld joint and because of these these also reduce the or these contribute towards the uh, increase the stress corrosion cracking because stress corrosion cracking is about the cracking of the weld joint in presence of tensile stresses and in presence of corrosive media so whenever these tensile stresses are there there is always a great tendency of the cracking due to the stress corrosion cracking so the mechanical performance and the corrosion performance of the weld joint is very badly compromised in presence of the tensile residual stresses okay lastly with the, because of these tensile stresses somewhere it is tensile somewhere is compressive and if the plates are thin which are being joined like this means stiffness of the base metal is low then it will tend to get bent like this so you have developed a weld joint the plates will go out of the shape so when the plates go out of the shape you call it as a distortion the simplest easiest to understand is that like you want a t joint like this where this member is perpendicular to the base metal when you develop one pilot weld like this so the plate tends to because of the shrinkage the plate tends to bend okay and so this is the one case when one fillet weld is made so if you do uh, like this where the plates are kept like this so you make one pass then make another balancing pass other side then make another pass another balancing pass like this so the plates will remain in position where it is required otherwise it will go out of the shape okay okay so this is the situation of incomplete penetration where there is no melting of the base metal okay uh, and there is no proper mixing of the weld metal coming from the two sides so that is also kind of incomplete fusion 
there is no melting of the base metal so that's why it is leading to the incomplete fusion incomplete penetration like there is no uh, through thickness penetration of the base metal just the melting little bit has taken place and inclusions here and there you can see this is a crack okay and there is incomplete filling of the weld metal uh, the cavity is left unfilled uh, i was talking about uh, the weld profile poor weld profile so here incomplete penetration okay you can see this is the unfilled zone near the toe of the weld this is undercut and this is the like unmelted base metal but the weld metal is just placed over this and solidified so this is overlap okay this is a typical good uh, weld bead geometry uh, as far as the location of the cracks so this is the next to the weld uh, heat vector zone this is a toe crack this is the longitudinal crack okay this is a transverse crack this is the under bead crack longitudinal crack toe crack so all these things are in like say this is the butt weld and this is the fillet weld okay this is the base metal so these are the like say transverse cracks perpendicular to the weld line okay so uh, this is the crater location so the the the, the joint is uh, sorry cracks are being formed in the crater, crater itself uh, let's show surface damage uh, uh, actually here you see the distortion uh, the, the the plates are going out of the shape the plates are getting bent uh, so this is uh, happening primarily due to the mm, the shrinkage and uh, the residual stresses uh, so longitudinal shrinkage when uh, the weld center has shrink more as compared to the transverse so shrinkage is taking place actually in all the directions so this is the transverse shrinkage and this is the longitudinal shrinkage so due to the transverse shrinkage the width of the joint will be reduced and uh, the, due to the longitudinal shrinkage length of the weld will be reduced and this is the angular distortion like the shrinkage of the weld leading to the plates getting bent like this so longitudinal shrinkage angular distortion and uh, transverse shrinkage these are the like common distortions uh, which are uh, encountered okay so uh, i am left with the last one uh, chapter uh, 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 section you can say that is about uh, what you call uh, the bridging and soldering maybe it will take about a half an hour or so so that i will take in the next uh, lecture